Titanic. Out of the scabbled grey, granite womb she slipped away, tensing her umbilical chains and setting free the screams of friction. Thrust into the Irish font of maritime baptism, a miraculous mechanical conception, doomed by folly, flawed by fiction. Sea trialed and fitted out in sumptuous and bridled splendour, the white star lines coal stoked, upright iron daughter. With furnace fired, steam straining screw, she came about. Scalpel sharp, she sliced her way towards Southampton water. Where, neath flapping bunting, crisscrossed for leagues, brass bands played to the excited throng on the bustling quay. Stout stevedores winched aboard supplies and sundry, with tugs and lighters in attendance, like drones about a plump queen bee. All aboard, with sable matching muffs and stoles, and broad bonnets to shade fair faces. Then gentlemen with tall silk hats, canes, spats, and well-groomed whiskers, accompanied by porters bearing monogrammed trunks, fine crocodile and chagrin cases. Followed by the financier, his ever hopeful mistress, the high-ranking churchman, the enthralled engineer, the academic, the soprano, and the entrepreneur, the surgeon, the artisan, the imposter, his accomplice, the broken-hearted lover, the gambler, the actress, and the disinherited heir, all settling into their staterooms, their stations, and their berths, as bowlines free the bollards, the late arrivals embark, completing a mixed lot of humanity, voyages of destiny, on a hope-filled transatlantic new century, Noah's Ark. With a farewell foghorn blast, the die was cast. A piano played the beguiling notes of Beethoven's Fur de Lis. As a grey ghost, she melted into the solent mist and the alluring arms of the nomad channel breathe. First port at Continental Call into Cherbourg, Normandy, to impress the coutured citizens of cultured La Belle France. The air was filled with the Gallic flair of accordion and tricoleur as a chorus sang from land to ship, bon voyage, au revoir, bon chance. Underway she ploughed a furrow through the western approaches, then scored a swathe across the Celtic sea, as her wash faded into distant lapping memories, she slowed over the harbour bar and sidled up to the Queenstown quay. In her shadow from all parts and paths, a medley amassed, a butcher from the Burren, a curly cotier from Connemara, a sligo seamstress, a turf cutter from Tralee, two horse traders from Tip and Tullamore, and a fiddler born in Tara, and the fourteen male pilgrims from Lahardorn and Aragul. Some had never stepped out of the parish or shade of the mountain side, with their homespun tweeds, shawls and rosary beads. They stared at the lonely horizon, their fate now on the tide. Under a seagull strewn, cold cork sky, family spoke their last goodbyes as she was tugged once more to motion. Once freed, she courted the wild and ragged western shores, then vanished like a dot into the vast, 
and all but empty ocean. On sacrifice of stoker's sweat, a fierce rate of knots was set. Via hammered rivet and cold cork joint, engine prop and balanced keel. Like a humming bird, she surged headlong into a starlit gauntlet and icy trial by ordeal. Along the Labrador corridor came another newly launched, not of timber or steel, without rudder or wheel or sail or skipper or crew, a luminous sculpted cathedral, the cold current her bold navigator and the only master to whom she was true. Back aboard life was plush for those so flush on the first class merry-go-round. They exquisitely dined with fine rare wine and well-clipped company. After brandy and port, they took the sea air in their comfortable chairs with a view from the balcony. Down in the steerage canteen, it was all yarns and tall tales. Some jigged, some swigged from the jug. Others sat silent in prayer, dreaming of fortune, adventure and sweethearts. As a melodian moaned, a string of camorias and the lament of an old Irish air. Iceberg, dead ahead, screamed the watchman. As it loomed like a spectre, an arctic mirage, a drifting debutante coming to gatecrash the ball, a waitress serving up sorrow for supper, sole dish on the menu, no demarcation, a lone level table and one plate to feed all. The eye struck like a war axe, shearing her rivets and cleaving her plate. As force met with force, along with her ribs, all promise was broken. Despair fell on the bridge like a guillotine, severing all other emotion. As dawning doubt infected the watch, and those about to be rudely awoken. Abandoned ship, a cold command that invokes the best and worst in man. A set of scales, a call to arms that reveals the metal in us all. For oft on the watery stage where the backdrop is death shadow, it is not the strutting lead, but the bit part at liver who takes the curtain call. So it was on the wetted edge of life, on a cold Atlantic April night, each played out their destined role on a ruthless patch of ocean. Some stood fast, others bolted past, the orchestra played on, and others forfeited their very all in acts of pure devotion. The unsinkable breathed her last with a boiler blast, her four funnels filled with water. For the second time in life she slipped, now into the dark abyss where hope would find no quarter. Fifteen hundred and thirteen souls the cruel maiden claimed for the deep. The lifeboats and Carpathia rescued remaining voyagers and crew. All was sunk, save the flotsam, and there a farewell love letter, signed in a hurried hand, James Flynn of Cool Kilu. And the frozen flakes migrated on and melted many teardrops into the sad Sargasso Sea, and blessed the silver eels, returning to the rivers of the angled isles to set the spirits free. <laughs>